Hi, would you like to learn how to take a nose cone and turn it into a transition? A transition that joins two tubes of different diameters? That's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan. Today I'm going to show you how to make a transition out of a nose cone. Now the transition, to do this, we just basically cut off the shoulder and the tip of the nose cone and we put in a tube coupler so that they can be joined together like that. Now cutting off the back end is pretty easy. Um, on the Apogee nose cones we have this line here that allows you to make an easy cut. Um, if you're using an Estes nose cone, you want to take some tape and wrap it around so you have a, a line to use that will show you where to cut. But since I'm going to use this one, this one's pretty easy, um, I can take a hobby knife and just run the blade through that indentation. And I'm through right here, so you can just kind of squeeze it and it will stress the plastic and allow you to pop it right off and that part is discarded. Now cutting the front is a little harder. Uh, for that I'm going to take a coupler and I'm going to slide it inside and I'm going to use where that coupler touches the tube um, as my cut line. But I don't want to do it from the outside. I want to do it from the inside because the thickness of the plastic. So how do you see where to cut? Well you take a flashlight and I got a bright flashlight here and you can slide it inside and you can see the line that it makes. Now push it as far forward as you can and then I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to mark on the outside and I don't want to do it right on the exact line. I want to do it a little bit forward just to give myself some leeway and rotate the flashlight around. And it doesn't have to be perfect since we're going to be sanding this. Just make sure that that coupler stays in the, in the right spot. Rotate the, the flashlight around. Okay, so when you've got it marked, you take some tape. Now the tape is not going to lay flat on the on the nose cone. It's going to pucker in places. But try to keep it going straight and then you see see where it's starting to crease on the tape. That's okay. Just press it down so you can try to keep that straight edge. Okay, so now I have a, a straight edge here, or relatively straight, that I can use as a guide to cut the nose cone. Now I can either use my hobby knife again, or I could use a razor saw like this, which has very fine teeth, and I'm just going to use the edge of the tape as a guide to cut. It's a little easier to use a razor saw, but you can use a hobby knife too. Now I'm through. Mm. Okay. Oh, look, the coupler was in there. <laughs> and I can 
can see how, how close I am. See, it's not perfect, um, but my edge is not straight either. So I don't, at this point, I want to start sanding until the coupler will just slide through that hole. So I have some 100 grit sandpaper here and a sanding block. I'm just going to start sanding. And I'm rotating it as I'm going to try to straighten out the edge. And the edge is actually looking pretty straight. It's just not far enough in. Okay, let's try my coupler. I'm pretty close. Uh, because it's got so much wall thickness, I can actually sand on the inside too. Um, if you sand too far, you're going to get a nice big transition or big uh, discontinuity between the transition and the tube. We want it as smooth as possible. I can fix this and I can show you that in a different video. But I'd like to try to minimize that as much as possible. And by doing on the sanding on the inside, I can uh, eliminate that. Um, so what I've done here is I've just taken a wood dowel and I've wrapped it with some rough grit sandpaper and I'm just going to sand around on the inside. This is the hardest part of the whole process is just to make sure you get the, the right fit. just barely get it through so actually I'm going to leave it the way it is um, I'm just going to clean up the edge with some finer grit sandpaper I got some 220 grit paper here just can't glue the coupler in there like right now um, because it can tilt back and forth. Um, to prevent this, you're going to need to cut a centering ring and this is going to take some trial and error, but you need the centering ring to fit on the outside of the coupler um, like that. And then it needs to slide into the, the transition like this. And I don't know if you can see this, I can't tell. Oops, I just pulled it off. But if, if the cup, if the centering ring is too fat, it's not going to stick out very far. Um, if it's too thin, it's going to stick out too far, and it could allow it to tilt inside. So that's the, the you're going to have to play with the outside diameter a little bit to figure out what thickness to use. Okay, so it is just touching right now, and I got about that much coupler, which is just about half of the coupler, which is typically what I like. A little longer would be preferable, but this is not bad. So now it's just a matter of gluing it up. I'm going to take some thick super glue. I'm going to glue the ring to the coupler. Glue doesn't want to come out, it's not a lot left in there. Okay, and then I'll put glue on the outside of the ring also. Clean that out, make sure that there's no shavings in there so I get a nice tight bond and then just drop it in, pull it through, and I'm just looking to make sure that it touches the inside edge, just like that. 
easy so far, right? Okay, now now we're just we're on the home stretch here. So now I need a bulkhead disc to fit the coupler. And we sell these at Apogee for your common sizes. It's got a little hole in it so you can put a screw eye. Screw that in and then get some wood glue. Oops, pull that right off. And then you're going to put some wood glue on both both sides. Smear that around. When you put in a screw eye, make sure you don't go past the threads because then you're then you're losing the strength. And then we'll glue the coupler in here. Probably too much glue, but that's okay. <laughs> Timber! Alright, and then this will get glued in here like that. And this allows me to put a shock cord onto it and attach it to the to the bottom of the tube. And so when the glue dries, our transition is done. I can test fit it on my tube like this. See, I got a little bit of a discontinuity here, and I got a little gap here, which means that my sanding job wasn't perfectly straight. But as I said, it is fixable, and I can show you that in, in a different video. Um, and then this will go on the front end like that, and now we have a transition from a big tube to a small tube using a nose cone. Um, if you like this video, um, down there at the bottom, there's a like button. There's also a subscribe button. And then over here off to the side, we have some other videos that we'd like you to watch. Um, my name again is Tim Van Milligan, and you're watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, may all your rockets fly straight and true.